first I want to say thank you for coming, uh, listening a little bit uh, about Burke's and Burke's future. It's a real you know, incredible opportunity for me to share uh, what I've been doing over the last year and a half and what it's really that work is going to, where it's going to take us, what we're going to be doing, what we're excited about, passionate about. And um, you know, we joked a lot um, last year and I really appreciated the uh, opportunity and um, ability to listen and observe. And in doing that, we're working on our strategic plan with um, kind of really in the thick of that and, and really reaching out to the community and figuring out who Berks is, where we are right now, and where we want to take Berks. And that's really at the core of my work. Um, and I alluded to a moment ago, kind of joking about my work. You know, there was a wonderful video when I started, what does the head of school do? You know, the head of school drinks coffee and pushes papers around, which was my favorite comment <laughs> from a lower school student. So I've been doing more than that. You know, kind of drink a lot of tea, not as much coffee, but really do um, appreciate it. But really, I've been working on where are we going? What are we going to do? Um, and spend a lot of time talking to parents, alumni, teachers, faculty, a survey, a strategic planning process, really to set us up for this next stage. And in that, I also think about who I am as a leader and what I think um, really is fundamental to great education and uh, a great school. And you bring those all together, you have Berks, which is already an extraordinary institution, and how do we take it to the next level? And that's the other really important piece. As a relatively new head of this school, sometimes when you become a new head of school, you're really inheriting something that you have to do a lot of tweaking. Um, to you, and you have to jump right in and make major decisions um, to, to take care of some, you know, do some crisis management. That is not Berks. I walked into an incredibly healthy institution that has a really strong identity and a really strong sense of itself and what it's trying to accomplish. And at the core, what we're trying to accomplish is educating, encouraging, and empowering girls. That guides every decision, um, and it's incredible. Um, core value system. It's an incredible mission and it's an incredible, incredible privilege to lead a school. But that's our work. That's my job description. I joke about it all the time. It's a good gig if you can get it. And I mean it. I mean, it, it is, that's, that's what it's all about. So when I think about a vision for this school, all those kinds of things um, and those kinds of, you know, the work with all different kinds of people, different constituencies, and those kinds of thoughts have guided my work. So Taking a little bit further, what do I think makes a great school? For me, you, there's all kinds of stuff, and you obviously get a feel for it. Um, my sense of the influence of where we are in the world and the changing uh, world we're in. You, know, you can think all technology, all kinds of change, all kinds of stuff. But for me, actually, what makes a great school are, are three simple things, and I'll walk you through them. First and foremost are innovative teachers. Um, because in a school, teaching and learning, teachers and students, they are the essence of the school. The head of, the head of school, my role is to guide that process, to equip teachers to teach at the highest levels so that students can learn on every level um, and become the young, young women they're supposed to be. So for me, the three things. Uh, great teaching with a real emphasis on innovation, and I'll talk about that more, who know each girl. We talk about 400 ways to be a Berks girl, um, and that has real deep and powerful meaning of what we can do with that, and who make learning joyful. If education is not fun, if education is not playful, if education in a K-8 setting doesn't focus on that joyful learning environment, we're really missing something important. Uh, when I gave this talk to the PA presentation, I was wearing a pink boa to help celebrate um, the upcoming auction. So I think my sense of fun and that commitment to it, in terms of my own engagement, some of that philosophy comes from the idea that when I'm really happy, when I'm really engaged, great things happen in my life. So we'll talk about this in the context of the school. The vision, the simplest way, you know, simple sentence is that through innovative teaching and purposeful understanding of each girl in a joyful learning environment, Berks will set the standard in K-8 education of girls. Berks is an extraordinary school. We have an opportunity to really elevate ourselves locally, nationally, and really be a pace setter. And part of that, part of the vision is that, to acknowledge that um, and, and really push us in deep ways. Why this vision? So I talked about kind of in the opening 
uh, is that it, it really, I spent a lot of time listening and observing. And in listening and observing, you, you, have, you have this incredibly healthy, thoughtful, self-actualized institution that knows its values, that knows at the core, educate, encourage, empower girls is everything you do. So that, that vision complements that. Um, it really builds, you'll see, on our fundamental strengths um, as a school and our established identity as a school. Um, I also think this vision is important because we really have an, you know, an opportunity and I think an obligation because of this school's extraordinary history to be a leader locally, nationally, in education and in girls' education specifically. Uh, and that is really exciting and appealing to me. And then ultimately, I said to you, um, as I said earlier, schools at the core are about students and teachers. Our students and our teachers deserve nothing less. This is about the girls. If we have the best teachers, they are going to be in the best learning environment. They're in the best learning environment. They are going to be developed um, and grown to the kind of their kind of greatest um, potential. So super exciting stuff. I hope you will find it um, as exciting. And I'll, and I'll share a little bit more. Innovative teaching. In a world that is changing kind of dramatically and fast, when you, when you hear the, you know, the word innovation, some people jump to it and say, yes, this is really exciting. Some people say, please, not another you know, screen, not another uh, example of social media, and they pull back and they get nervous. Um, innovative teaching is beyond technology. It, it's beyond just you know, kind of enhancing and tools. It's really about how you think um, as an educator, how you design every lesson plan, how you determine what tools um, are going to impact your classroom the best way. And so for us, innovative teaching starts with this core belief that the pursuit of excellence in the craft of teaching is an institutional priority at Berks um, and amongst Berks teachers. And the belief that Berks teachers are lifelong learners um, who are invested in their personal and professional growth. This is what guides everything. This sentence, um, this core belief, comes from work this summer by the faculty, uh, the faculty task force working on our professional growth system, uh, which is our evaluation system. That says everything. At Berks, we talk about a growth mindset or something we're deeply uh, working hard to develop in our girls in a profound and impactful way. If, it, if our teachers don't live that, the opportunities um, are missed incredibly. So when we're talking about innovative teaching here, we're talking about teachers who walk the walk, um, who make um, that belief themselves as you know, personally and professionally as growing and learning. Uh, they're modeling that, they're living that, and they're, they're exuding it. Um, the girls can't help um, be impacted and grown from that experience. So prepare students uh, for success by emphasizing 21st century skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and collaboration. As I like to joke, 21st century skills is something um, that's major buzz in, in schools right now. Um, and it's not as though before the, you know, uh, the new millennium that people didn't collaborate um, and that they didn't think criti critically. What is different, um, I think, in education in the last five to ten years is how mindfully and thoughtfully uh, schools are thinking about it. And Berks has certainly been a leader on, on this. We've developed our own model, very Berks specific on 21st century learning and our teachers looking to really grow those skills. They motivate students by creating authentic learning experiences that are grounded in core academic content and enhanced through technology. Really kind of making learning authentic and fun and relevant um, and current. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm here right now uh, standing in the bakery. There is nothing more current than that. You look beyond, you can begin to see some of our girls' plannings on projects, um, and it's pretty extraordinary stuff. Um, and that relevance, that, that authenticity, really what is what stays with the girls in each of their learning moments. We believe a growth mindset, as I talked about earlier, is a vital part of the Brooks culture. It's a vital part in terms of what we're trying to accomplish with the girls, but it's also what we're trying to accomplish as a community. We have a tremendous commitment uh, to growing our teachers and their growth mindset. As parents, you know, we work incredibly hard to provide a really broad range of um, you know, parent education because we are all growing and learning.
And teachers um, who are truly innovative possess characteristics that are like openness, flexibility, innovation, risk-taking, creativity, passion, and determination. As an educator, as a mother, you can't ask and expect your children to do certain things if you can't live them as well. And so when we're talking about innovation here, we're trying to create opportunities for teachers to really themselves model that and be um, push those envelopes so that when we ask girls in this really rapidly changing world to kind of be able to be go to that next level, they're watching adults do it. They're seeing it happen. They're having, feeling it. Sometimes they're you know, really knowing it consciously, but sometimes if the whole atmosphere is that and they're surrounded by adults who live that kind of educational ethos, the power of that is potentially, I think, extraordinary. So really looking to develop and grow that. A purposeful understanding of each girl. Independent schools know children well. They have the luxury of smaller classes and things like that. But at Berks, we talk about it in a different way. We talk about there's 400 ways to be a Berks girl. That's a really extraordinary statement. And when I think about knowing each girl, it is kind of the embodiment, embodiment of that declaration of 400 ways to be a Berks girl. I know in the search process, it is one of the key phrases. It's interesting. You look at a lot of the materials about a school when you're trying to decide, is this a school for you? That connected with me deeply. It connected me deeply as an educator because that idea of really helping individuals to self-actualize, to know themselves, and if teachers really know a girl, that happens. Um, they really are able to, to kind of, you know, ultimately as a 13, 14 year old emerge from Brooks in a way. And um, it really connected with me personally. I've shared on many occasions that my uh, two sisters also went to the same women's college that I did, not at the same time. It was a really defining experience, um, but I can tell you from the Grogan girls, there were certainly three ways to be a Smith woman. And so this idea, if that's really what we're trying to do, um, it's, it, you know, the potential is enormous. Also in that purposeful understanding of knowing these girls, you really have to it's not just, you know, kind of, oh, it's nice to know a girl. It's really kind of, a, you know, deep and informed knowledge uh, by kind of committing to the best educational practices for girls in K through 8, what learning systems, what programs you choose, what scholarship is out there, what research is out there, that you're using it, you're making it relevant, and you're not just saying, oh, it's, we, we educate girls. We are actually looking at and thinking about what are the best things to educate girls, whether it's the classroom experience, the hands-on experience, the social-emotional program, we're really digging deep um, based on real um, education and real research. But to do all those things, to really make it happen, you also have to provide program support, in my mind, in three areas. In the area of professional development, academically, curricularly, um, in terms of professional development, in terms of teachers teaching the social emotional side, we talk a lot about balance and the incredible value of the balance of the whole girl at Berks, but if you're only focusing professional development on one side or the other, that balance gets off. You also have to provide curriculum support and program support and always making sure you're looking, refining, um, and developing the best curriculum pieces. And then ultimately, that you have the staff to support all that um, work. And so those are exciting and important pieces to really having a piece successful. Joyful learning environment is both a physical environment and an emotional environment. Schools are both. Uh, sometimes you luck out. At Berks, we luck out. Physical environment, uh, there's an emphasis um, on this campus. We have an extraordinary campus in a city that does not exist in virtually any other city, um, uh, any other campus in any other city in the country. And that's a little bit of luck. I had an incredible recent experience of spending time uh, with the niece of some of the founders of the school as she was here to celebrate a milestone birthday um, in San Francisco visiting us. And she talked about when the Burke family made the decision to buy this piece of property out in Seacliff, and when there really wasn't much out here. And we um, literally, generations and decades later in the Berks community and history, get the luck of that incredible decision in terms of shaping our school and institution. 
So um, in terms of our joyful learning environment, the next steps is, you know, is a continued and emphasized use of how we use our outdoor space and our indoor outdoor space that really blends nicely together. And really looking and thinking about creative um, and innovative uses of our teaching spaces. You know, that's part of the environment. But that's not the only what piece that makes up the joyful learning environment. The other side is the program. You really have to look at where does joy fit into learning? Where does play fit into learning? And especially in a K through eight education, um, and uh, that um, joy, play, wellness really can de define and impact dramatically uh, the academic, social, emotional development of girls. Uh, for me, why it's just just a non-negotiable that school has to be fun. It's not only because I'm a kind of goofy person who likes to have fun. I think that in a year and a half, most folks have picked up on that about me. But more importantly, it's because when, when, when children are in environments where they're having fun, they have that sense of play, they have that sense of experiment, they have that sense of joy, their learning experience is more authentic, they feel safer, and when students feel safer, they take more risks, they, they, they are comfortable with being challenged, and therefore their learning is deeper, is more committed, is more powerful. So uh, all those pieces. So it's those three pieces that really you know, kind of define this vision. Innovative teaching, innovative teachers who know each girl and are doing it in an environment, um, both physically and socially, that creates a joyful learning environment. So I've been here a year and a half. We've already begun this work. And it was quite candidly, going back to this, is being kind of built on strengths that exist in the school. Um, 21st century learning is something all independent schools have been talking about quite a bit over the last decade. Uh, and Burks took it to a deeper level. Um, if you go to the, our website and look at 21st century um, learning, it's pretty extraordinary. We have something that we refer to, you know, kind of internally as a place map, but it's really our vision and, and construct for how, how we look at uh, learning and really it's visual, it's very reflective of who we are, but it's also a value of what we have of combination of academic rigor in um, specific curricular pieces and also non-cognitive um, elements of the program that are really powerful. I stand in one of the makeries, um, you know, with the incredible support of the parent community last year, this idea that you could take a very traditional um, tech lab that that I've joked um, in admissions that looked pretty much like the tech lab uh, that was in my high school in 1980-something. Uh, and it was 2013. So to have it um, reimagined that really provides opportunities for girls to have that authentic learning experience in two different spaces that are flexible, that really all kinds of different things can happen, is extraordinary. So that was there, and it's happening. And this is literally a place where it's a work in progress. It's changing and developing every day. Every, and in certain ways, it's being used the ways we expect it. In other ways, um, it literally is happening before our eyes. We've had an incredible kind of speaking to kind of combining the world uh, professional development um, breakfasts this week, uh, which have happened in this space of adults learning and sharing um, with each other. So it's not just for the kids. And part of that space, part of these spaces helped create that um, possibility. Uh, Berks has uh, spent uh, the past year taking its uh, evaluation system, uh, put together a task force this time last year, uh, including extraordinary summer work of faculty and administration, literally looking at our system, uh, revamping it, kind of putting in the values of things that are um, current and existing in terms of setting criteria and standards uh, for our faculty, but also looking to make it relevant for them, going back to how learning happens. And one of the things that's interesting in the evaluation of educational professionals, it's a different kind of system. You, you, people are off in their classrooms and getting you know, the opportunity to get in there, but also get quick and regular feedback, making the system more nimble and flexible, something that we really kind of, as we shared and surveyed the faculty and did different things we really made a commitment to. And so the piece 
um, that is unique that we've joined a collaborative called Folio of independent schools that has created an online system to really create the opportunity for instant feedback and to be able to manage the information that's being shared between supervisor and teacher really directly, easily, accessibly from kind of, you know, genuine kind of critiquing of a lesson and an observation to a quick just drop by, I can go into a classroom say this, I really saw that, I really liked it, and it can happen like that. Whereas the intentions of keeping notes and putting putting together a huge final document at the end of the year, some of that gets lost. It's uh, in its first um, six months and we're pretty excited about it and the impact it's having on the school. And then the last piece is Burke's commitment to national board certification, uh, which is an ex kind of the highest level of certification in teaching. Uh, Burke's has a number of teachers who are certified, a newly minted teacher in Mei Wong, um, and it's a really powerful uh, process. It requires a tremendous amount of self-reflection. It's an over two-year commitment. The school is not only committing it in terms of kind of the, the time that the faculty need to do it, but it also is committing to it financially and supporting it um, and supporting those uh, who are looking to go through the process and then are ultimately financially rewarded if they are successful in the process. We think it's really important because it's great for the individual teacher, but what really makes it powerful is when you have a commitment to something like that and because it, to get the process done you have to have your other, the teachers who you're working with share ideas, reflect on the work you've done, watch a video, come, maybe come in and observe for you so that you get some direct feedback. It is creating a vocabulary, it is creating a conversation professionally amongst our teachers that is really powerful. So this is already happening. But probably what I'm most excited about is building on this. Um, and where do we go next? And how do we go next? And kind of taking those strengths. So we have our school that is filled with serious professionals who want to create a great opportunity for all our girls to learn to the best of their abilities. And so when in kind of this work of the last year and a half, trying to figure out how do you take that to the next level? How do you have fun um, with that in, and really be impactful with that? Uh, I really thought about two areas um, and, and, and just being able to jump in. So we have two um, exciting announcements. Burks uh, will be running its first, uh, hopefully, its first of many um, summer professional development institutes. Um, and we're also going to be adding a new administrative position. I'll first talk about um, the Summer Professional Development Institute. And again, I want to talk about each of these in the context that if you're really focusing on developing great teachers and innovative teachers, what you are really focusing on is developing great learning opportunities for the girls. Because the more, the, the better teachers are at their work, the better their experience is for the girls. That this is, you know, in the end, you're here, you're listening to me, wow, exciting, head of school is talking. But schools are not about the head of school. Schools are about teachers and students. And actually really in reverse. Schools are about students and what you do to support teachers to really have those girls, you know, emerge um, when they graduate from Berks um, as the best they can be academically, socially, emotionally um, prepared for high school. You can do it. So the Berks Summer Professional Development Institute is stepping towards that. I worked with the division directors, um, Alice and Rebecca, when when working on this idea that um, professional development has always been done well and, and well supported here at Berks, but how could we make it even stronger going this idea of building on strengths is to say what you know really you know provide some opportunities that um, do two things kind of you know funnel um, our focus on very specific institutional priorities and put our faculty in situations where they're side by side learning from each other. When you are, it's not just one off where someone's just going to a conference by themselves, but when you're with someone who you're going to be teaching with, um, or teaching in the same grade level with, or in the same division with, or you're gonna be passing one, the girl from one grade to the next with, and you have the shared vocabulary, the shared vision of what can happen um, when we're all, we're all working together, uh, it really, it, you know, it's kind of like you throw the, the stone into the pond and the ripple effect. And so really trying to think about 
that um, as we chose um, on-site workshops and recognizing that um, trying to create opportunities for the faculty to do it in their own environment, kind of create a comfort zone. So with the, in the week that after school ends, we will be here ho hosting three different workshops. We're bringing people from the outside to help us do it. And focusing on this idea, you know, why choose these? Going back to knowing each girl. And knowing each girl, sometimes that's working on the social emotional piece for the faculty, and sometimes it's working on them as learners. So you can see in this, in these three, it complements that. Developmental Designs um, is a social emotional uh, program that is basically the upper school version of Responsive Classroom, which is our program there. And we've had individuals do work in developmental designs. This is for the entire upper school faculty, not just advisors, recognizing that all teachers work with girls. Um, and are helping them to grow, whether they're teaching them science or math on a particular day. Um, they're, they're connecting to them, they're responding to them, and really making sure um, that they are equipped to do that in the best of ways. If something comes up or, um, or a challenge, or you just see sometimes as a teacher, sometimes as a head of school walking across campus, um, you see someone who's kind of stepped away from the playground and is a little sad and teary. And sometimes it's just because they're just tired. Mm -hmm. They're in second grade and they're just tired. Sometimes it's because something has happened. A moment has happened on the playground or in the classroom and it's all of a sudden just kind of welled up. And as a teacher, the more you are prepared to respond to those moments um, that are beyond, quote unquote, your um, curricular disciplines, the better equipped you are as a teacher to really help those girls. And when girls are seen in, seen in that way and really seen in those emotional moments, they themselves begin to actualize that and embrace that and see themselves. Investigations um, is the uh, program out of Cambridge, Mass Massachusetts that our math program comes from, Turk, in, our lower, in the lower school. And uh, Alice and I are huge believers in this program, um, the authenticity of it, the deepness of learning that can happen with it in terms of really understanding numbers and numbers fluency and really setting kids up um, for deep mathematical learning. Um, as they progress um, beyond really getting students to be interested in math and numbers, not just memorizing um, facts. There's an important part of that. You sometimes you just need to know, you know, x times x equals, but if that's all you know, you don't understand where how to take it to deeper la layers. And so we've been doing some different work this year um, with an outside consultant and have grown even more interested in kind of digging the layers deeper now that we're in year four of Turk here at Berks. And so we're going to bring uh, some folks from Turk to work with our K-2 teachers, um, literally on that kind of layering of, of the math program and our understanding and our ability to teach um, to different levels within there, within the program. Understanding by Design um, is a curriculum development program. It's a way of looking at how you develop particular lessons, particular units, um, and it is something that is beginning to um, take hold here as, as kind of our, our, our curriculum design choice. Um, we've already done some workshops uh, internally, and we're going to do kind of a broader level um, this spring and, and kind of begin to develop that even further. So we're going to focus that on grades three and four and um, our uh, specialists uh, in the lower school. So you can see, here are three incredible workshops. These are, if you're, if you're an, if a nerd educator like myself, these are kind of, you know, kind of leading uh, programs and you, you, you get excited about it, I understand. So you might be less excited by just the name and the program, but uh, trust me, uh, this is exciting. This is exciting for me as an educational leader and it's certainly um, exciting for the faculty. The other piece is, again, this same mindset of trying to cull and focus, uh, you know, kind of institutional initiatives and kind of needs and programs and desires of faculty. We're looking to create opportunities for faculty to travel other places um, and, you know, encourage them in particular to attend workshops on these areas. So we picked five workshops uh, for faculty to, um, that happened later in the summer. Uh, to travel to um, and attend with the hope and design that several people, um, not just one, will attend each. 
So Lucy, Lucy Calkins Reading and Writing Institute is, um, again, if you're a nerdy teacher like myself, kind of one of the premier um, reading and writing programs. It's a teacher's college at Columbia University. They go out, they also, they sometimes will come to schools, but they have an incredible program there um, and the opportunity to go to New York. Constructing Modern Knowledge um, obviously has a feeling of uh, an emphasis on innovation when you see the MIT Media Lab um, as part of the site and place. Um, so they go between Manchester um, and Cambridge. Uh, building learning communities, those of you who are familiar with kind of thought leaders in education, Alan November uh, is a kind of leader on technology and innovation and impacts. Uh, that is kind of his, his quote unquote conference and he brings in some of the top and leading expert and kind of thinkers on it. Uh, someone described it to me uh, that it's just, you know, kind of, it, it, they, they uh, almost, it was so exciting to them. Uh, they were overstimulated. They kind of were like, oh my god, I was fast. You know, like they, they felt their brain was kind of burst. So, you know, here's an emphasis on curriculum. Here's an emphasis on innovation and kind of those three choices. The other two speak to the other things they're also trying to do. Stanley King Counseling Institute. Um, is a uh, counseling program that comes out of the National Association of Independent Schools. It's a week-long workshop. Um, they run them in uh, Colorado Springs. I did this workshop personally um, in my, uh, after my second year of teaching um, at an independent boarding school in Connecticut. To this day, it is one of the most consequential professional de development um, experiences of my teaching life. Um, it really got me to understand as a high school history teacher, um, though I was incredibly excited and a full-on nerd about all things American history, not all of my students were, and that in a classroom and particularly um, working with adolescents, that sensitivity I had to have um, to their life, their life experience, their social emotional um, wellness was really going to shape and influence and help me um, and help my teaching environment. Uh, my classroom environment, uh, and this idea that as teachers we are not professional counselors but we're going to run up against moments all the time and really be equipped to respond to them. So lessons learned uh, quite some time ago, uh, stay with me and really excited about offering that to folks. Critical friends training is the idea that we're really working on our evaluation system here um, at um, Burks and our professional growth system and folio that I talked about earlier. But the key to that and the real key to meaningful growth for any of us in any profession is the conversation you have. And can it be real? Can it be critical um, and not personal? Can it really get to the core? This is what you need to do to get better at this and not have immediate, people immediately get defensive. And so what we're trying to model um, and develop here is that ability to have that important conversation because if we're really going to grow collaboration amongst the adults in the community um, in terms of our thinking and doing, they have to really be equipped to have the best and most powerful um, conversations. So you can see our choices are related to what we're putting on and saying are the most important pieces of our work. The next big announcement. 2014 is going to be exciting. Are we excited? Are you excited? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yay. <laughs> you can feel it. So, <laughs> Director of Curriculum and Program Innovation. Uh, looking at uh, what, uh, you know, if you're to mem add a member to the admin team and looking at our needs and looking and listening uh, last year, listening through the strategic planning process, reading the surveys, looking at the results, this, this commitment to Burke's really valuing um, its core curriculum, valuing what we do, but also looking to push it and grow it, so the innovation piece um, and teaching and learning, but also um, looking uh, for a person who could, you know, kind of drive certain things. And so uh, kind of what I've come up here is a person who will help uh, grow a culture of innovation in teaching and learning at Berks. Um, that will help place innovative pedagogy and professional growth mindset at the heart of our daily life. You know, that it's just, when you think about Berks, we are literally pushing the envelope curricularly um, and professionally. And, and that, that in doing that, we're really impacting the girls' life, the girls' lives in really important ways every day. This person is gonna be busy, but what's really exciting, this person's real core work 
is uh, working with the division directors and myself to uh, encourage curricular innovation and program impl implementation, um, but also really making sure we're doing what we say we do. So really being able to oversee curriculum and have another uh, person whose energies are really focused on that. And then also, if you're going to really talk about professional development and begin to create institutional priorities around professional development, there's a lot out there. And you need someone really working on it, um, examining it, looking at what are the best things, going back to that, what is the research out there telling us that we should be doing um, in regards to developing girls in the best ways. And to have someone whose job, a major part of their job description is looking into that, researching that, sharing that, um, and creating opportunities in different kinds of ways to share that with faculty here, and then looking for the places we should either be bringing people to Berks or sending people from Berks to, to grow professionally. That's exciting work. And then technology works with myself and the division directors to drive strategic planning in key areas of academic technology. We kicked um, things into gear with the makeries um, and kind of some of its really advanced, sophisticated technology, some is just hands-on, you know, kind of getting down and dirty with blocks. And what is that thinking and, and how are both related? And then more importantly, it gets beyond the makeries. What happens in the classroom? How do we push in? Um, how do we enhance the academic experience with the right use of the right tools at the right time? So needless to say, I'm pretty excited uh, about these changes, these announcements. Um, what is really exciting to me, as I've shared them uh, now on multiple levels uh, with, the, with the faculty and administration, and, and, and I have to say working uh, with the division directors and really kind of creating these initiatives, this, this team effort to really drive where we're going in the future, working through the strategic planning, but really now um, being able to announce that these, these, two, these two pieces to faculty, to staff, to parents, to the board, feeling the energy and buzz. This is really going to, Berks is an exciting place. Berks is going to, um, I think, really be doing some amazing, interesting things um, in education. And all of this is just going to mean great things for the girls. So I look forward to uh, sharing more um, in the months ahead. And thank you.